Hey, it's real good to see you today. Welcome to Barlow Barbecue. If you're just getting into backyard barbecue, maybe you just picked up a brand new Weber kettle grill and you're wondering how to do ribs. You've never done them before or maybe you have done them a few times and it just hasn't come out the way that you expected. Well, this video is just for you. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I make awesome ribs on my Weber kettle grill. And be sure to stay until the end of the video so you can see a great trick that you can use that'll guarantee you'll get perfectly tender ribs every time. All right, so without any further ado, let's get started on these ribs. All right, so here is the rack of ribs that we're gonna to use today. And this is actually a rack of spare ribs, but you can use baby back ribs and follow along with this video and it'll all just be the same so now the first thing we need to do is flip this over and remove the membrane that's on the underside of these ribs now the easiest way to do this is uh, to try to find a bone on the wider edge here on the, the wider side here and there's one right there and you just kind of get your knife underneath that membrane and just kind of pop it up just like that see that lifts right up now grab your paper towels and you're just gonna this just gives you a better grip on the membrane and you're just gonna pull pull away now of course since I'm shooting a video it doesn't work quite as smoothly as it normally does but it does come right off All right, I got the membrane completely removed and now the next step that we wanna do is add our rub. I put together a nice barbecue rub. It's a homemade recipe. I'll have it right down below in the description box for you if you wanna check it out. Otherwise, feel free to use whatever kind of rub or seasoning is your favorite. There's no right or wrong. And since we already have this flipped over, we're just gonna put a little light coating of rub on the bottom here. Now on this side, we can put a little bit more rub on there because this is the side that's gonna get all that good bark. And there you go, folks. This rack of ribs is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge until it's time to cook. So let's go ahead and get our charcoal started. All right, so I've got my chimney starter uh, filled just a little bit with some charcoal. Let me show you. You can see down there, I maybe have 20, 25 charcoal briquettes in there. It's not a lot. Now to light this chimney starter, a lot of people like to use paper, but I prefer to use these Weber lighter cubes. Now since there's very little charcoal in here, it's not gonna take long at all for it to get lit and be ready to go. So I'm thinking this should be ready in about 10 minutes. In the meantime, let me take you over to the kettle grill and I'll talk to you a little bit about what I've got set up over there. So here you go. This is how I've got my grill set up. I've got uh, my charcoal baskets here on either side because we're going to cook indirect, okay? So in the middle, I've got some tin foil down on the bottom and I'm going to have the grill grate over top here and we're going to put the ribs right in the middle here over that tin foil. And that's it. That's my grill setup. It's super simple. So I'll tell you what, I'll see you in just a moment when this charcoal is ready to put on the grill. All right, my timer for 10 minutes just went off and this charcoal is looking perfect. I think it's ready to put on the grill. I'm going to try to spread this charcoal out evenly between these two baskets. And let me just take a moment to arrange the charcoal. I'm going to bank them all together here in the corners of the baskets. And that should do it there. Now I'm going to fill up these baskets the rest of the way with some unlit charcoal and that should be enough to last a few hours but if I need more I can always add some later on. I'm using a few chunks of hickory wood for the ribs. Hickory is a real nice mild smoke flavor that goes great with pork. Now it's time to get the grill grate on and here's a probe for a grill thermometer that I'm going to use today so I can monitor my grill temps. All right, so we got this closed up and I wanna give this a little bit of time to let our grill temps come up. I'm looking for about 275 to 300 degrees to cook today. And if you notice all this thick white smoke that's coming out the top, that may look cool, but I tell you what, it 
does not taste good. It's not going to make your ribs taste good at all. So you also need to give some time to let this smoke clear up. You want like a very thin, almost transparent, kind of a blue smoke coming out of the top. And I'll show you what that looks like uh, when we're ready to put the ribs on. All right, y'all, I think it's time to get these ribs on. We've got a grill temp of 297 degrees. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with barbecuing at higher temperatures. It just means that things won't take as long. So, and if you notice too, that smoke has really cleared up quite a bit, all right? So this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and get those ribs on. All right, we are smoking. The ribs are on and I'm just gonna let those go for maybe an hour, two hours, and we'll come back and check on them and see how they're doing. And then we also need to uh, pay attention to our charcoal and make sure that we're not gonna run out of charcoal during the cook. But I think we definitely have a good two to three hours of charcoal in here. And uh, so we don't have to worry about anything for right now. Also, I do want to let you know that because this grill temp was running close to 300 degrees, I did close down the bottom vents to about maybe halfway, and I've got my top vents closed up as well, and those are closed up to about maybe quarter of the way open. Okay, so for now, we're good to go. We're just going to leave this alone, and we'll come back here in maybe an hour, two hours, and check on those ribs. All right, folks, we've been smoking now for a total of two hours, and the grill temp is at 288 so that's been holding strong this whole time let's check out these ribs I tell you what these ribs are looking mighty fine for being on the grill for just a couple hours now I've got a meat thermometer with me I'm gonna check the temperature of these ribs now I, I for, did forget to mention this at the beginning of the video but uh, I gotta find a place I can go and there we go a good meat thermometer is definitely something you want to have in your barbecue barbecue toolkit. All right, so that's around 181 there. Let's check the center here. Oh wow, okay, 196, 197. Let's try the end here, and that is also reading in the 190s. So yeah, I think these ribs are about done. I think I'm going to give them another hour and at that point I'll show you guys my trick that I use to make sure that these ribs are going to be perfectly tender. Now the charcoal is looking really good. That's definitely going to last for another hour so I don't need to worry about adding any more to that. But what I am going to do before I close up the lid is I'm just going to rotate these ribs. Yeah, you know why not? Just give them another hour the other way. Maybe get some more even cooking. But uh, yeah that's it. So I'm going to do that. Close up the lid and then I'll see you guys in just a little bit. All right, I think it's that time. I think these ribs are about done. We've just wrapped up our final hour of these ribs being on the grill. They've been smoking for a total of three hours. So now's the time when I wanna share with you guys the trick that I use every time that I do ribs to make sure that they're gonna have the perfect tenderness that I'm looking for. And all you need is a toothpick or something like this uh, meat thermometer right here. And this trick has become so reliable for me and so consistent that I use it every time I do ribs. I also use it every time that I do pork butts and I use it on, on briskets as well. Let me show you how it works. Ribs are looking fantastic y'all and they're smelling so so good. So okay, here's what you need to do. Take your toothpick or the meat thermometer and all you're going to do is just start poking it in there and it should feel like little resistance it should feel actually like kind of going into soft butter and these ribs are feeling perfect I get no resistance going in I think this is going to be excellent tenderness I'll tell you what you'll get this after just a couple tries on your own once you get the hang of it you're never going to have bad ribs again now before we pull these off of here I do have one final touch that I want to give these ribs. I put together a homemade glaze and I'm just going to brush some of that right here on these ribs. Now you can use a barbecue sauce, anything that you prefer, it's up to you. But in case you'd like to use the glaze, I'll have a recipe for it right down below in the description box.
All right, now these are good to go, so let's get these off of here. We'll get them on a cutting board, slice them up, and then do a taste test. I have a feeling this is going to be pretty good, y'all. Let's try this out. Mmm. Perfect bite. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. Those are some dang good ribs right there. That glaze is real good. Mmm. Got a little heat from some hot sauce in there, but it got some sweet with the brown sugar. But let me tell you about the tenderness on these ribs. The tenderness is perfect comes right off the bone but still has a nice little bite to it tell you what folks you need to try out that toothpick test it's gonna really change the game for you it helped me out so much before that I was making ribs that just weren't consistently tender but ever since I started using that toothpick test every time I do ribs they come out great so I hope this video was helpful for you I hope that it was inspiring for you to go and try some ribs on your own if you haven't tried them yet so I'm going to wrap up the video. I really, really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment down below in the description box, and be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook as well. I love you, and until next time, smoke them if you got them. Bye-bye. <laughs>